We're rebuilding a 5,000 pound fire damaged Porsche 911, which we bought from a scrapyard. The cost to fix it was over 7,000 pounds, but we managed to get the car started for just 700 pounds. There's still a lot of work to do, and we've started to lose our cool with it. Today, we're going to fix more electrical issues, give it its first big clean, and also fit some much needed mods. So the electricians may have got it running, but we've just come in today to check it over and there are quite a few more problems. We have absolutely nothing on the gauge cluster at all. We have no revs, no oil pressure, no speed, no fuel, no anything. It's just useless, basically. Windows don't work at all, but they do work when you unlock it and lock it. We plugged in the climate control and it goes immediately onto full blast. But one of the most confusing problems we have so far is to do with our indicators and our hazard switch. So this is, believe it or not, the hazard switch. Either indicator, left or right, gives you the hazards as long as the hazards are pressed, but we have no indicators at all, which is not legal on the road. And the best part is that if the car's running and you press the hazard switch in, you can then take the key out and the car will still run until you press the hazard button, when it will then turn the car off. <laughs> okay, now watch. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> We do have lights. We're missing a brake light. We're missing a brake light, which we think is a bulb. We'll get back to our mystery electronic issue later in the video, but in the meantime, we needed to fix the 996's brakes that weren't ready to go back on the road. And away he comes. Did I just shit my pants? Yeah, multiple times actually, yeah. Uh... One time for the viewers. Oh! oh! Every time we work on this car, I get a good feeling about it. Stop throwing those things, oh, we, we do need them. Need that. We do actually need that. Yeah, everything sort of mechanical has been looked after. What he didn't look after is his relationship. No. Or his wiring. Right, these old brakes are absolutely manky and shot, but we've got some new ones. We're going upgraded. We spoke to EBC and they sent us some very heavy discs. Not only that, I might have asked for a little extra in the box as well. I've got braided lines for this thing as well. Braided lines are going to make the brakes feel so much better. So we've also got some blue stuff brake pads, and these are perfect for road and track, because we're going to be doing long road trips in this, but we're also going to go and smash fill on track. So these are going to come in handy. You're going to do what to fill? We're going to smash fill. That guy. Look at that. So they're still drilled, like the originals, and in the same sort of pattern. But they're also coated in this black stuff. This does come off. But what's good is that these bits don't rust. And that is a pet peeve of mine. People with rusty bells on their brakes don't even go outside. You cannot tell me there's a better feeling in this world. Baby being born? Nice try. Try putting brake lines on a Porsche. What about? I've never had one. <laughs> right, cool. That's on. I'm an artiste of my generation. In this piece, I was really feeling metaphysicality. Before we carry on rebuilding and modifying our Porsche 911, we just want to say a quick thank you to this week's sponsor, Car Vertical. Hundreds of cars get crashed or stolen every single day, and they go back on the road without you ever knowing anything about it. However, with a car vertical check, you can find out that dodgy history. All you need to do is enter your reg number or your VIN to find out if your car has been crashed, stolen or clocked. As you can see behind us, we've got our mighty crew car, the L322, which is yet to step a foot wrong. And what's even better for us is that the car vertical report says it's got green ticks for mileage, finance and damage. So unfortunately, this Porsche 911 hasn't been so lucky. We've got green ticks for odometer and finance, but an amber warning for damage. And if you scroll down, it has had a quite large front end smash. Oh, actually, that's got some rear lights. We could take those without the amber bits in as well. The rest looks okay, but that front end smash is pretty big. So it also comes up as unclassified. And in the UK, legally, you have to tell a buyer if a car is Cat S or Cat N, and this doesn't have that. So if you see this car come up for sale in pristine condition, you know that it's been in a crash. So anytime that you're buying a used car, van, or motorbike, make sure that you run a car vertical check to make sure that the price you're paying matches the history. And just for you, Car Vertical will offer 20% off when you use code TDC. A huge shout out to EBC for sending us the 996's new brake setup. Hit the link in the description if you need any braking parts. And with ours now sorted, we decided to try an old trick to get our cracked windscreen fixed on the cheap, seeing as getting a new one would cost over £1,300. I was expecting to do more damage. I thought I'd go straight through that. Yeah, Porsche, a 911. Yeah, just like a, a pole, uh, uh, like a, a rock, quite a big one, came out of nowhere. But yeah, full new screen. 
Seeing as the insurance didn't buy it, we picked up a used windscreen from a GT3 for just 150 quid and called in our mate Mark from Reading Autoglaze. Mark needed a hand fitting the screen, which Edwin bravely stepped up for. Oh, you smashed that. Down a bit more, that's it. Fantastic. You've just done your auto glass apprenticeship. <laughs> and we had a new windscreen fitted for £150 plus a box of beers for Mark. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh, wow, geez. Yeah, thank you very much. I decided it was my turn to clean and restored our faded scuttle panel to black. I mean, I haven't washed the green off. I didn't clean it. I'm just heating it up. <laughs> and also set up a DIY spray booth to revive the wiper arms, which meant that our 911 had at least one part that looked good. I like the spray booth. Yeah, look, fumes out. Fumes out, paint in. That's what I always say. It's better out than in, that's what I always say. That is a new wiper blade. But it's also not new, it's the old one. I just tried to heat it a bit and I've, I've knocked the paint off. So we're gonna put it on the car. <laughs> Are my nuts under the hood? The hood? First we spell it center with an ER, now under the hood. There is someone commenting, have you seen that guy in the comments? He, every time. He's very angry. He's very angry. He's very, if, if you are that guy, I'm, I'm not, we're not sorry. Piss off, jerk off. <laughs> uh, those are now gonna be slightly different color to the wiper. Do I care? No. Yep. Oh. Am I gonna change it? Yep. Nope. Oh. That's pretty neat. They're gonna look at that and say, that's clean. And then they're gonna get up at that and go, ooh, brother. Brother, what's that? If someone was like that over my car, <laughs> inspecting my windscreen wipers, I'd leave. <laughs> we could then move on to bleeding the brakes so we could get the car back on the ground and ready for some more mods. Wow, look, Will, got a little ladybird in here. Although that ladybird would have been there when we went for a drive. It's just quietly sitting there for three years and then it went, whoa! All right, mate. Don't worry about it. Don't, don't let it get you down like that. The electricians from last time unfortunately wouldn't have time to look over the 911 again for a while. So the next day, Dips from P1 Auto Keys came down to help us sort the Porsche's problems. He'd cleared his entire schedule for that day and even prepared to stay at a hotel that night in case the Porsche was fighting him. And while he got to work, Edwin and I got ready to do some interior cleaning. But then, just minutes later... Yes! Man. What was it? You're gonna laugh at this. Oh no, here we go. No. Your switch was on back to front. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even kidding you. A massive thank you to Dips from P1 Auto Keys for making the five hour round trip for a five minute job. If you need car keys, supercar keys, or an embarrassingly simple wiring job, drop P1 Auto Keys a follow on Instagram and he'll sort you out. As Dips made the long journey home, we got to work refitting the interior. Now, one of the first things that we noticed on this car is that nothing on the cluster worked at all. We couldn't get revs, we couldn't get speed, we couldn't get anything. So, Dan's Timeless Classics, Danny, he's a really, really nice guy who loves 996 aero kits, especially the early ones with the cables, just like ours. And since we bought the car, I've been messaging him, he's been helping us out a lot, and he said, I've got an old cluster sitting at home. I'll send it to you guys and maybe it works. Everything works. So, thank you very much to Danny from Dan's Timeless Classics. Give him a follow for helping us out, sending us a new cluster. I've never been so sorry to a person oh, in my life. Genuinely. He drove two and a half hours to come and help us. To do two and a half minutes of work. It was then time to fit the far less beige carpet and I had sneakily installed something too. If you look to your right, look at what I fitted earlier. Whoa! We're literally installing safety. This is the safest this car's ever been. Gear shifter going back in, we love it. It is starting to look like a car. Look, I'm no expert. This might be a car. It's getting there. Right, let me test. Oh yeah, there we go. And off. And Wee off, woo. done. That is the first stage of this car going back on the road. The dashboard could now go in, which Will reckoned he could do single-handedly. This is a bold move. Here we go. Here wow. we go, he's going in by himself. That's done, I think. I reckon steering wheel on, airbag in. Call the MOT guy. Yeah, it's, you know how they do camber for racing? This is dash camber. Yeah, this is pre-crashed. <laughs> With Edwin now actually helping rather than just sitting around and watching, we got the dash in easily. In the last video, we had a lot of comments asking us why the hell we cut the loom out and didn't do it pin by pin. Now, firstly, the issue is that they were all melted together in one bulk. 
Yes, we probably could have cut each one of those out and made them split up so that we could see where they came from, but it wouldn't matter because in the middle of it all was a connector block, the same connector block that you see here. In that connector block, not only did it have some colors that went in one side and went out a different color, a lot of them were broken off and frayed anyway. So to separate each one of these wires and trace what they should be all the way through would have taken just as long as cutting the loom out and just replacing each one. Oh, there we go. Our final red piece off. And in going, a new black door card. We picked this up from Steve for 50 pounds. 50 two pounds. door cards. Two door cards with no speakers, which is a really yep. rare early thing. On top of that, he also gave us a black carpet, front half of the carpet, and a black dashboard for 20 pounds. Thank you very much, Steve, as always, from SW Race Car Hire for helping us out. 70 pounds all in. And for reference, on eBay, it was like 150 for door cards. 300 for the dash, and about 200 pounds for the carpet as well. So we've just made a massive saving. Steve did pull the carpet out of one of his cars that had been sitting breaking for probably three or four years. So it was very soggy. A little bit of wax cleaning, brand new. You cannot argue with that. Nokia, that's how you know it's strong. Hello? No, we've already got a windscreen, thank you. All right, thank you, bye. Door cards in and looking great, we turned our attention to the leftover red leather sections that were still usable. And Edwin had good news. The electricians may have cost us 700 quid to get this started, but we did mention in the last episode that we might sell some parts to recoup something. And I've sold the steering wheel. A friend of mine, Colin from Leather Restoration Limited, said, I'll have that steering wheel if you're selling it. And I said, what's it worth to you, Colin? And he said, 500 pounds he will pay for this steering wheel. So it is sold, I need to bring it home with me tonight. That's 500 pounds back in the pocket. It was 700 pounds in, 70 pounds for interior pieces, 50 pounds for a loom. We did pay Mark some beers. We did pay Mark some beers, that cost us. We're on a decent course for our money right now. Right, so as you know, we have two clusters, one not working, one working. Danny, who sent this over, did tell us, look, the reason I'm sending this over, the reason you can have it free, is because it's pretty broken. Also, there's no glass here in the oil pressure. So, I've had an idea. Why don't we have a little bit of essence of our old fire damage car and take the warped glass off of this and put it onto this and make one good cluster out of two. The other thing is that while we have swapped over to a black dashboard, a lot of our red accents are the only things we have right now. So we're looking for other stuff, but for now, this guy's got to go back in. So we've got to put it together for the MOT. Can't put it in like this. Whoa, look at that color come up. Wow, it's quite bright red under the fire damage. People are gonna look at that and say, that's clean. Ah, that's good. We've got two functioning doors now. That would have failed the MOT if we didn't have that. It's not perfect. I'll give it another couple coats. We'll stick it in the car. The 911's fire did serious damage to the left door. But whilst we waited for parts, I came up with a temporary solution to one of the problems. So we've got the black door card in on this side now, but obviously previously this was completely burnt and melted in half. And the damage that's done on the inside to the cable is it's melted all of the plastic that the door cable goes around. So we haven't been able to open this door from the inside since we've had the car. You know, say there's a fire, you kind of want to get out. We've ordered a new cable, it hasn't turned up in time. Behold. It's incredible engineering. I cannot take a single ounce of credit for this engineering. This is classic Will. All I needed for this was a heat gun, three cable ties, and a very small brain. And, sorry, some merch from Auto Addicts. Also, we'll have some of these soon. So, you know, just driving along, and then, there we go. The door opens. For now, you won't burn alive in your car. And that's all you can ask for. And you can't ask for more than that. It's not a look. It's an interesting one, for sure. Working gauges, look. With a little bit of our original flavor with the burnt dials, that's cool. Happy with our progress? We got the interior back together, ready for our next step in getting this 996 back on the road. Before we bought it, our Porsche had been sat on a scrapyard rack for three years, exposed to all kinds of elements. The paintwork was faded, the front badge had been removed, and there was nasty tint film residue covering the lights. So our next step was to give it a proper clean, which we chose to do just as it started raining. Let's go, it's time to spaff all over this car park. Go on, get a son. Give her one for me, son. Wow, that just is not, just not coming off. Shit. Nothing's coming off. Having fun? Yeah. Yeah. I am wet. Do you know what? It's almost too warm over here. 
With the car now clean, we could have got a professional in to do a proper polish job on the paintwork, but we were so excited by our progress that we decided to give it a go ourselves. Before that though, we needed to dry ourselves off and then remove something that had been annoying us since day one. This car didn't want it. Oh, oh God. It was all stuck on pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> well, and there we go, the Porsche. <laughs> That important task completed, I got ready to start polishing by removing any nasty contaminants from the paintwork using a clay bar. Now any rough bits have been removed from the paintwork, I polished a test patch to see how it would come up. Oh, look at that. This is a white car. They're very hard to see on camera, but trust us. Watch the reflection of the light. And disappear. It's gone. Right, let's do the rest of the car. Let's get this bitch polished. While Will was busy making the rest of the car shine, I turned my attention to removing the nasty tint from as many things that I could find. If you stick film onto lights, go to straight to jail. I then discovered something quite disgusting. So I just took off the other side front repeater. Would you like to see what was in it when I, when I turned it out to clean it? The entire thing was filled with water. <laughs> 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 right, the car is coming along nicely. It's, it's looking good. This it is, is looking, looking very good. good. And I think let's put the wing back in. Right, ready? I'm going to pull. You're going to pull. Ready? Go on. Three, two, one. And there we go. That's just the factory way to, you know, get a 911 in the wing. What next? Badge. Bulbs. Badge. Bulbs. Bad Car. <laughs> <laughs> right, would you like to do the honours? Absolutely not. Don't try and put that on me. Also, this is the only brand new, genuine Porsche part we've bought. Only genuine Porsche, Porsche part. How much was it? 10 pounds. 10 pounds. And, and it says it goes out of date in 2025. Expiration. Don't eat it after that point. <laughs> yeah. <gasps> I think you've done it instantly. Oh, for ah. Also, Anyone asking, why do you buy a badge? Lightweight. Lightweight. We've saved up to grams there. Up to grams. Also, us who are both overweight. <laughs> <laughs> that looks good. That has got its face back. I love that. So this thing is looking so much better already, but we're not quite done with the outside of this yet. Edwin has done a pretty cool render of this with some graphics up the side, with some different wheels. That will be coming in the next episode. So let us know what you think of it. If you hate it, just don't comment. Just shut your mouth. We've removed the awful film. We've removed the awful Porsche badge, which is polished out semi-nicely. Something next episode for that you'll see very well. And finally, Will has spray painted these uh, matte black and it looks good. You've done a very good job on that. Time to go put them in. Paint. With the paintwork looking much improved, we moved on to fitting a new steering wheel, but Edwin spotted a problem. You know how I brought in my Nardi, my fake Nardi that we we're gonna use for the steering wheel of this? Yes. I don't have a horn button. And that is needed for an MOT. What if we shout every time he presses it? I got it. He's got it. Nobody tell him. He never drives his car, so it's fine. He won't notice until we're long gone in the distance. Ah, that looks familiar. Nah, you never seen nah. that in your life. Actually, no, I come to think of it, never seen it. Before. Never seen her. Our brand new wheel looked great, although there was a slight issue. Well, the horn works now, so it's, it's contacting. There's something grounding out. Yeah. I scared Ben, I saw, I saw the camera bump. Okay. That's what should be on there, no? Way! We jump again. Love. <laughs> he scares Ben every time. That's perfect. That's, Good a, that's a horn. Now, not only is that horn, that's a stolen horn and wheel, and we love that. So the bodywork is done, the interior is back together, but we've got one more thing. One more. Four more things, actually. Four, Four more things. Let's get outside. Look at this. Look it at is it. so much better. It's How much better is that? No longer a matte white car with those nasty black wheels. Amazing. Genuinely I can't so pleased. It. I'm stunned. And proud, I'm going to say it. I'm, I'm proud of I'm this. Proud. With a hint of its past life. I like that on there. Thank you very much to Darren from RPM Technic who lent us these wheels. They aren't ours. We still need wheels. Let us know suggestions if you still have any. Yes. We also need seats. 
graphics and an MOT. And an MOT. So we will get to that in the next episode. But in the meantime, go and watch the last episode where we got this thing fixed and running for 700 quid. 700 not quid. Not seven grand. And we'll see you in the next one. See you in the next one.